After a massive failure of their first experiment, sparking Hercules, the scientists of Mega Colony have secluded themselves to refine and perfect their machining project. But in their absence, a terrifying creature emerges from the forest, no longer held at bay by the unnatural machining insects. Gunning Colio is left unchecked and free to roam and corrupt the forest. He is getting stronger with each and every passing minute, and he is now ready to face the battlefield of Kray. True Demonic Rival Rogue Gun and Colio is a brand new VR for Mega Colony. Gun and Colio introduced the new mill playstyle for Mega Colony where you can destroy your opponent's deck before they can even use their cards. His job is to be the main attacker and set up deadly situations with his destructive tool sets of abilities. His first ability allows him to every time he is ridden to gain an additional drive and 5k power. On top of that, you get to mill the top card of your opponent's deck, and if it's a grade 3 or greater, then Gun and Codio gets another drive and an additional 10k. So on right, Gun and Codio can either be a 70k with triple drive, or a 27k with crot drive. This makes him a powerful attacker and helps you get to your key pieces faster. His second ability for the cost of a soul blasting a great free allows you to mill the top card of your opponent's deck and for the rest of the turn they can't guard with the same grade of the milled card. This ability in combination with other annoying cards from Mega Colony can set up lethal turns that otherwise wouldn't be possible. Gun and Colio is a powerful unit but his power truly shines when we combine him with the other deadly insect of the clan. A prime partner for Gun and Colio is unrivaled blade rogue Cyclomatoof. This great free gives you an excellent attacker as this thing can swing in with an extra crit but also his unridden ability can be a nice combo with Gun and Colio's ability as they can screw themselves even more if luck is in your favor. Another strong great free that works well with Gun and Colio is Death Warden and Lion. This great free is as strong as Cyclone Tooth, but the only difference is that this card will always have to crit and is also block sentinels. This part is mainly the reason why this card is essential for Gun and Colio as when you mill a great zero with his activity you can not only shut down draw trigger PGs but also grade 1 PGs and and protect markers, meaning they have a really tough time blocking this attack, especially in combination with the following card. Phantom Black is the final piece to the nasty win condition as this card can really shut down any hope of guarding. If you combine this card with End Lion or Cyclomatoof, you can have a 2 crit attack with an annoying guard restrict. But in the case where you've milled a grade 0 with Gun and Codio's act ability, then they can no longer block your end line attack and only guard Cyclomatoof with a protect marker. So use this card when the right situation arises. When take a look at the general support cards, we have Hidden Kirli for a solid attacker that can mill our opponent and even have a potential card draw, allowing it to be a versatile unit for the deck. That combined with a 14k booster, which we have plenty of, and we can build a solid 33k column. Another solid attacker for the mill deck is Well-Dressed Mutant Elgo Billbuck. This unit combined with another mill card will give you a solid battle door unit. If you pair her off with a 14k booster, you get a solid 22k attack. That can circumvent the main problem that faces battle door units. Interceptors. But, of course, being Mega Connolly, you can just negate Interceptors completely if you like to do so. In the Grade 1 department, we have Brawny Jerk. This all rounded unit will find its way in all kinds of decks. This is a solid 40k beater, meaning it can be used to build solid magic lanes. It being able to soul charge gives soul blasting grade 3 cards more consistency as it could randomly soul charge a grade 3. And to top it off, his 1 for 1 trade can help you rip hands to stretch as you can trade your excess grade 3s for shield value from your opponent's hand. And finally we have Machining Hornet. The card fixes multiple issues the deck has at once. You can fix your grade freeze rights as both new main grade freeze want you to keep rewriting, but you also have the soul issue with all the extra soul blasting. So having this card in your arsenal, you will have more resources and consistency. The new Mega Colony deck for Gun and Colio, as stated, will have a resource issue, mainly soul, as all your main abilities will use soul. So keeping that up to a healthy number can be tough. 
But luckily, Mega Colony has enough tools to generate resources and some even restore counterblasts. So it's important to balance your deck to fuel your milling cards and keep track of them during the match. Your trigger line will in most cases revolve around the standard 844 lineup with the obvious draw PGs. However, you can experiment with a more aggressive 10 to 12 crit variant if you want to take a more OTK approach, which will feature in one of our lists, if you feel a bit more aggressive. A reason why we can experiment with more crits is that we have access to the Protect Gift Marker. The Protect Marker gives us multiple different uses with the playstyle of Mega Conley. First off, we can use it as a stall option so we have a better chance of getting towards a deck out win condition. We can also use Protect 1 as an extra card in hand to discard for cards like Brunny Jerk and Phantom Black. And lastly, we can use Protect 2 to set up unblockable attacks in the case where we can't get the perfect scenario of a great 0 mil and a Phantom Black booster. But utilizing Protect 2 and all the strong attackers, we can overcome this issue. Using Gun and Colios to its max potential, we can take multiple approaches. The first build we're going to take a look at is the straight out of the box build. This list has the basic mill support cards all in the higher grades, but we see some new additions as well. We have Megalair Lancer in the build, not only as a potential high attacker, but also to cover some issues of certain cards. It helps us to get the most out of Elgo Billbug as it shuts off interceptors, but you can even fuel Gun and Colios act ability without needing to rewrite. Giant Cannon Mutant tower horn is just a generic consistency card as you can dig deeper through your deck and the extra 5k makes it a solid 30k booster that can make solid 22 to 32k columns flowery terror is another solid 30k booster for the mill mechanic as it attains the power the moment your opponent mills a card this means it works perfectly with killer leave and brownie jerk the focus of this deck is pretty simple you try to overwhelm your opponent with powerful attacks while at the same time destroying their decks you're not banking on the deck out as a main win condition as you use it more as a disruptive tool and when the cards play out nicely you can put them in a deadlock situation if you mill the correct cards with Gun and Colio and Cyclone Matouf. This deck does have some flaws as it can't keep up with all the skills cost and will slowly lose its tempo. There are multiple ways we can fix this and if we combine the older cards with the new support we can build a more defensive build that can definitely win on deck out as they can reuse their mill skills more effectively. This is possible with something like the following list. We we see a lot of different cards with the inclusion of the old cards where we only see two new faces in this particular list, Bloody Hercules and Stealth Millipede. Bloody Hercules is a solid beater with the potential on hit counter charge and power gain. This is one of the tools to generate the extra counter charge needed for all the milling. Stealth Millipede is another one of those Mega Colony secret weapons. This card can either shut down an entire column or gives you a counter charge, extra soul and gives your opponent an extra damage. Both outcomes are good for you and bad for your opponent. This build focuses more on mailing your opponent's deck to oblivion. To ensure this, use your bloody Hercules in combination with hitting Killer Leaf as early as possible to get extra counter charges. Also, don't forget hitting rear guards also counts for generating counter charges. Stealth Millipede can be used in all kinds of scenarios. Usually your opponent rather let the attack hit, it, it is boosting. So if you need resources and really get most bang for your buck, make a column of him and Bloody Hercules. On hit, you get two counter charges, one soul, and you can give 6k away to a unit. This can turn your Gunning Colio into a 23k unit or a 33k unit without boost. But if you want to keep Millipede on the field, you can boost a Cyclomatooth and hope for a crit as your opponent don't really want to let the attack through and if they do, you get all the resources back and you just dealt 2 damage. Meaning you most likely can win through damage this game. Although we don't focus on winning through 6 damage, we will most likely win most games through damage as we can still generate hard hitting numbers and by potentially milling all high defensive cards, they can't keep up. For this reason, we play Phantom Black as in the off chance of milling a grade 0 with Gun and Colio's act ability, you can set up a checkmate move. With that said, let's take a look at a build that mainly focuses on building an absolute OTK win condition through the many nasty Mega Colony cards. A build focused on such an OTK could look like this. This looks completely different from the other list. We only have the bare minimum of the mill cards, but only because they can function for different roles than just milling. The main strategy of the list is to use Gun and Colio's act ability and hope on milling a grade zero, but depending on our opponent's hand, that 
doesn't always have to be the outcome to make a win condition. We use Cyclamatoof and End Lion to set up powerful attacks with crits and boost it with Phantom Black, we can completely shut down guard options. And in the case they can still use their great zeros, but don't have a PG, you can overcome their shield with potential triple or quad drive full of triggers. To set up this scenario, we have the entire grade two and grade one lineup to help this combo. Machining Mantis is just like Machining Hornet and can help us search our grade freeze. This way we can rewrite more consistently but also fill our soul with more great freeze as we not only have Mega Lair Lancer, but also Butterfly Officer that gives us the ability to shove great freeze into the soul. Through this way, we can view Gun and Colio and End Lion turn after turn. Lastly, we have Hatred Spot. This is a great for early game aggression as well as defense, as a Vanguard, it's a hard body to beat over, unless they dedicate more cards from hand, leaving them more vulnerable. And as an offense card, it's great as it builds 20k columns with a booster, making it a solid number on grade 2 turns in case of a defensive trigger. The reason why we run 12 crits is to put our opponent in kill range as soon as possible. Either with the early trigger they are at four when we go into a great free turn or when they are still at two or three we can drive check multiple crits with our extra drive checks making our end line an otk enabler gun and Colio is an evil new unit that can be abused in all kinds of different ways it can be the centerpiece for a stall tactic that seeks to destroy the opponent's deck or in the complete opposite and seek to destroy the opponent through sheer brute force. Either way, they are RNG depending and in some cases demand a significant amount of resources. It's up to the player to deal with those issues either through crafting the most resource balanced build or a deck that can maneuver on low fuel and that can deal with the bad RNG. Best way to eliminate the opposition is to shoot them down before they get the time to generate power. This is the main tactic of the new mailbox of Gunning Codio. Are you devious and nasty enough to resort to these tactics? No matter the answer, somewhere out there is. So stay on your toes when entering the battlefields of Cray. And that wraps up this deck spotlight. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this particular VR and all the support cards around it that we got in this set. And if you liked the video, then why not slap a like on it and subscribe to the channel to be notified when we bring you more Cardfight Vanguard content. As always, this video is brought to you by our lovely patrons over at patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider. I want to thank you guys for supporting us as you make everything possible on this channel if you do want to support the channel you can simply do that by heading over to patreon.com slash insider and become a patreon today well with that said i'm mr time leap and i see you guys in the next one